that's always going to be part of my story. Right now, I'm in a right. really good place. I'm on top of it. I have it under my control. Right. But that could switch a month from now. You know, but the, right. the important thing is that I'm to a point now where I realize it's okay not to be okay. So it's okay that some days I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to feel, I'm not going to feel like doing it that day. I'm going to feel like it, it's getting the best of me. But as long as I remember to come up and take a, take a breath of air, you know, yeah. as long as I remember to resurface and not to let that depression push me so far down that I'm not able to make it to the surface to, for that breath of air. Uh, I'm, I'm still in control. You know? Yeah. And so it's, that's been really beneficial for me to see it in that way. But, yeah, I mean, mental health still affects me today. Um, you know, I went on to have a set, my second son, my, my beautiful little son. <laughs> and he's four. <laughs> And I didn't suffer from postpartum depression with him. Um, immediately in my pregnancy, I walked in already knowing that I wanted the same plan. I wanted to stay on that medication. That's what right, we right. did. Um, I knew towards the end of my pregnancy that I needed to go ahead and start getting a little bit of additional support, um, whether that just be from like group therapy sessions or sure. whatever, just so I could stay on top of my my own feelings and I could have somebody hold me accountable. Um, I bought one of those wonderful little monitors that monitor their breathing at night and go off. If, oh, yeah. If for yes. some reason they're not. Right, yeah. Um, I'm telling you that that saved my life. I feel like or saved me from falling into that, like, sleep deprived, like, Worry you know, and, yeah. Yeah. post-motherhood because... I felt comfortable enough with it doing the job that I was trying to do right, right. with Liam, you know? And so that really helped me to be able to sleep. Um, I don't really listen to recommendations from other people in terms of, oh, put the baby in the crib right away or whatever. Like, right, I had yeah. Both of my boys in my room with me. Um, next to me, I had them in their office play, but uh, next to me for, you know, nine months, and that's what worked for my family and that's yeah. what worked for our, our breastfeeding journey and mm-hmm. yeah. um and so I had a really really great a really great like postpartum experience with Finn but now that it's come to the point that my husband and I really want to start trying for a third baby um we put it off for about a year and a half longer than we thought we would have because I'm to a point right now where you know it, it's kind of like looking back at, like, trauma that I felt and that I experienced after Liam's birth in terms of my own mental health yeah. and worrying about and feeling like everything's so good right now with me. Like, I feel so good right now and I'm in a good place and I'm on top of it. Like, I've got this under control. And, you know, I start to think, would it be selfish for me to have another baby? Which I know is, is you know, something that my mind tells me that, that I need to work through. Um, because it's not true. It wouldn't be selfish for me to have another baby. If I were to experience postpartum depression again, it doesn't make me any less of a mom to Liam and Finn. But those are the thoughts that my brain tell me, you know, what if I fall back into that cycle of um, depression and I'm not able to be up and at them and be the mom that I am for them right now, you know? Yeah. So uh, it's something I've been grappling with. Uh, for about a year and a half, so we have a little bit of a of an age gap, more than we wanted. The boys are almost exactly three years apart. They're three years and 11 days apart, and that was perfect for us. I mean, we loved that age gap. Um, and so now Finn is four and a half. So if I were to get pregnant, even now, you know, he'll be absolutely he'll be older than five. So yeah. I'm going to have to baby. Um, the benefit of it would be that they're both in school. Yeah, yes. I would plan probably to stay home for one more year. Um, I did end up going back to school and getting my degree. While I was I, I graduated, I went through having a, a newborn and then being pregnant um, all the way up to my delivery and then graduating with a nine-month-old. Um, I have my degree in early childhood education. Okay. And so that's what I was doing before I um, decided to 
to come and stay at home mom. So, you know, my plan was to go back to teaching, but I, um, if we end up having another baby this year, I think I might take one more year off um, just to be home, but, you know, it's up in the air, but that's something that, still, that I still struggle with that I think maybe would be relatable to other moms who want to grow their family and are scared to if they've experienced mental health, um, you know, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety after birth. Yeah. I think I think it's um I'm I'm like I'm a little blown away if I'm being honest. I I you, you don't I feel like you don't hear a lot of this side of that. Like usually I feel like so we and I know that Melinda and I have talked about this before. I feel like a lot of times when when a general conversation is had about postpartum, it can go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. And one is that every negative thing you feel means that you're you have postpartum depression. Sure. And then the other thing is is oh well it's just postpartum depression. So there's yeah. these like really two yeah. weird mindsets that like um you know like so Dawn when she wrote her letter to us that we read and we've recorded already um, like we've talked about, like in her letter, she talks about how when she felt off, she felt like she couldn't talk to anybody because everybody yeah. kept telling her, oh, it's postpartum depression. And it wasn't. It, wasn't. it just was normal. Like, I don't even really want to say baby's blues because it wasn't anything like that. But it was just, it's hard being a new mom. And, it, and sometimes you have yeah. negative feelings. You don't feel good. You don't feel you know, and like you feel inept, you feel like you can't, like there's a lot of feelings that go with it. So, you know, and when you, you mentioned earlier um, that, you know, when people who haven't had a men mental illness or who haven't had postpartum depression or any of those things, they can't relate. It's like, it's weird because I feel like, and maybe it's because I know people who have, but like for me in particular, I didn't have that. I had one day or one moment of a bit of a weird breakdown that lasted about 15 minutes. And I think I was just a little overwhelmed with our change that happened like the fourth or fifth night we were home with our son but like but even I can look at it and say like it's not this thing that needs to be dismissed or assumed it's right. it needs to be recognized and it needs to be talked about more because it's like the only conversation that you ever hear is like oh go to your doctor you know, like, I don't know. It's like, it just seems like yeah, it's yeah. not one of those things where like people want to talk about it or, the, and they don't want to hear you talk about it either if you're going through it. And it's like, that's when you need people the most. It's the, it's when people, and honestly, when, you know, when I was in the throes of depression, yeah. um, the thought of getting out of my bed and, and showering, I mean, or even putting on a bra and putting on clothes and having to, to bring myself to get in the car and drive to a doctor's appointment. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that was that was overwhelming. I mean, yeah. you know, when when you're really in, just I mean, even outside of postpartum depression, just my own experience with depression on its own. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's days that like the dishes would be a reason that I didn't get out of bed all day because that task seemed too overwhelming for me to tackle. And I think it's important to remember that like mental illness and postpartum depression isn't black and white. There's right. never going to be two stories that look identical. Nope. Nope. Um, and you're right. There are some just, I mean, hormonal changes in your body and feeling overwhelmed or feeling tired and frustrated or emotional. Those yeah. are normal. Those are normal yeah. things that, that people go through. Yeah. But I think that it's also important to remember that if you're feeling that way, more often than not, if it's not just like a fleeting, like passing, like day or two, if those feelings are, are, you know, become like starting to set in and you're feeling these this way more often than not, then I think that that's the point where, because, you know, I'm not qualified to tell you, hey, this is what you're going through, sure, this right. is not what you're going through. Right. And I wouldn't pretend to be, yeah. but I think that even more so than just like telling our friends, Hey, because that's the thing. We're all so quick to be like, "Hey, if you need anything, I'm here." Mm -hmm. Or, "Oh, you, you should you should go to the doctor and talk about that." Mm -hmm. But do we really mean it when you say, "If you need anything, I'm here." We have to mean that. Yeah. We have to be the ones who are like looking out for our fellow moms, looking out for our friends, yeah. and saying, "Hey, I'm going to be at your house in 15 minutes. If I have to put you in the bathtub and wash your hair for you, I'm <laughs> right? Absolutely, yeah." Yes. Get in the back of my car, you can lay down the whole time. I don't care. I will put a 
tell her I'm going to Amy can nap the whole way through. Whatever you need to do. I'm going to make sure you get there. I agree. You know, like we, it's because sometimes it's just too much to say. I feel like that's where you have a lot of, you see these stories of like moms who, you know, commit suicide, like, you know, not long after they have a baby and everyone around them is like, oh, I just didn't know. I didn't know. But we don't have the postpartum support in this country that, you know, that they have in other countries. They, you know, in other countries, giving birth is this like community group effort and you have nurses and nurse midwives coming to your house for weeks afterwards just to sit with you, just to check in on you. Just to, they they don't say, hey, six weeks from now, I know that you're probably still going to be bleeding cramping in pain and gorged breath if you choose the bus seat because your supply isn't regulated. But you need to get yourself and your baby here to this hospital so that we can we can check on you in this sterile cold room yeah. and then send you on your way and we'll see you again in a year at your yearly checkup. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. And it's just not enough. And so that's where we have to make up us as as friends. I, I don't ever accept the answer, I'm okay, or I'm fine. I yeah. ask pointed questions to my friends when I feel like they're not okay. Yeah. Um, or even if I feel like they are. Just yeah. to try to get, because sometimes one question can trigger them to start talking about something else, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think when you have, so the reason that there's just it's one of those taboo topics yeah. and it's unfortunate that it is because mental health in general is a big deal yeah like aside from just post- it, it is yeah. it is absolutely and there's definitely been times where people have questioned well is it really a thing it is there's definitely or, yeah or it's made up that's a yeah, big one. Oh, that somebody, adhd doesn't exist add doesn't exist right like i mean there's and that's one of the difficult things about trying to talk about it too yeah. and that people don't want to talk about what makes them uncomfortable yeah but like for us yeah. as moms and friends we have to be vulnerable for our friends yeah. that need our help yeah like um, yeah. Monica wrote a letter into us. Okay, um, I was I, I talked to Monica throughout her pregnancy. We've been friends for a long time, and she um, and in the beginning she had a hard time, and she struggled with mental health before as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like she even uh, leading up to the birth of her son, she was still actively like seeking help and advice from professionals because of things she knew yeah. were going to affect the way that she would be able to raise her child. <laughs> okay, so she was actively trying to do that until the it was too expensive. Yep. It shouldn't be yeah, too expensive. I mean, that's another huge yeah. roadblock. I mean, you think about, like, we, you know, that... <laughs> That's a whole other tangent that could go off. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. Care and the full profit system. It's so refreshing for me to see mm-hmm. how many moms feel comfortable. Because for me, being 21 years old, not really having any friends who have babies yet, um, and also going through something where I literally did not feel connected to my baby. I felt like it would be better off for him not to be with me. That's uh, there's not many, you know, places that I felt comfortable turning and saying, hey, yeah. this is how I'm feeling because, you know, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, they're going to lock me up or they're going to, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. They're, they're going to take my baby away from yeah. all of us. They're going to yep. think, and, oh, she's so, just young and doesn't want this baby. It can go, yeah. 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 Like, yeah so it's, it's, it's literally that. like, it's. I, I love hearing more people talk about mental health, but I think that we, like, that it also needs to be remember that, you know, like I said, that black, and mental health is not black and white, but there's a difference in, you know, feeling sad or feeling down or whatever, and being able to yes. pull yourself out of that and, like, true mental health issues, because it just worries me when it becomes such a topic that's thrown, or, like, a word that's thrown around yeah. for multiple right. different, you know, yeah. multiple different scenarios and I'm scared it will water down the seriousness of 
people who actually need to get help and yes. take medication to yep. to save their lives, you know? Yeah, because it's, and I use the term easy, like very loosely. Um, it's oh, easy. Yeah. It's easy for people to say, oh, it's just the baby blues. You're going to be fine. That's what Monica heard a lot, right? Monica heard about baby blues. She she had actually at a point convinced herself that it was just the baby blues. And we were talking and I'm like, Monica, no. you, you need to call your doctor. Like, I'm, I'm not going to discuss everything that we talked about. Right. But it came yeah, to a point yeah. where like, you have to. Yeah. Like, yeah, it got I, I love you. I You need yeah. to see somebody. Like, and any of my friends who, like, talk about anything like that, I'm like, I ask more questions now. Yeah. Because through being friends with Monica, that was my first, like, hands-on experience with what was going on. Mm -hmm. And it was so, because I knew what she was like before having a baby. And I knew about the different, yeah. the different, um times in her life of like the lulls the, the ups and the downs you know with her mental health right and it was so different and it you know i, and, I and did now research I challenge you, you know <laughs> well to, i challenge you now like the next for the next time instead of you know the thing that we've all done that i am also guilty of until it was myself in that position instead yeah. of just call your doctor let's say hey let me call your doctor for you and yeah. you know give me your birthday i'll make you an appointment i can yeah. get you there i i went spent very recently three hours on the phone with one of my very dear friends who's a single mom who was going through a really 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 rough mental health crisis to where mm -hmm. she lived a few hours away from me and i was i had my bag packed by the door ready to go up there yeah. i said send me a picture of your insurance card um send me yeah. Send me your ID so that when they're asking me your, your address and everything, I'm just reading it off. I'm going to call you and find you a person to get you an appointment with. I spent three hours on the phone and found only one place in the entire, and she lives in a pretty big city, one place that had an opening within the, the next month. But I went ahead and booked it for her, and I stayed on her and made sure that she had somebody there who was going to physically come to her house and take her to that appointment. Right. And that's what we need to do for our friends because yeah. I'm telling you when they're when you're in that when you're in the throes of of depression or of a crisis like that, the last thing that you can do is like even get up and brush your teeth. Well, and so the, and how can we expect them to get out the house and you know make it to a doctor's appointment or yeah. or have to be the ones who are so discouraged when they're making these calls over and over and over? And everyone's like, no, sorry, no, sorry, we can't see you, no, sorry, you know? Right. When a mom's in the in the hospital giving birth, mm -hmm. everyone shows up, but they're not showing up to see her. They're right. showing up to see the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's gazing at this baby through this window and talking about how cute the baby is and who, who does he or she look like. And, and meanwhile, you can't even walk to the bathroom. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. There's the mom. Still in the recovery room yep. by herself, waiting to be wheeled to her next room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her baby just was, you know, she just had this baby and got to hold it herself a few minutes. But, you know, now they have it at the nursery and everyone everyone's out there with the baby. But what about, you know, what about the mom? And I think yeah. that's an important question that we need to ask more often. It's like, what about the mom? Yep, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's part of what we're trying to do here yeah. is we're trying to build a village of moms who support each other no matter what you're going through um that's why it's yeah that's why it's so amazing and important that you shared this with us and we thank yeah. you so much for yeah. for coming on and, well, I, and sharing I, I, that with us yeah i think also what you're doing i mean i think that this is wonderful i think you're right i i'm glad that i'm in a point of my life right now where i am able to to talk about this freely and yeah. you know to reflect on it that it's not something that I'm I'm going through right now and I hope that you know if anything that we can not if you know that it could reach not only a mom who might be struggling or might be you know yeah. wondering about that but also just to remind us us as friends to mm -hmm. you know yeah. to really like do our job and instead of just saying 
you know, I'm here. If you need me, let me know. Right. You know, yeah. take it take it a step further and, and show up. Try to anticipate their needs before they have to ask. Yeah. So Especially if you've already been through it. I mean, you know what yeah. what it's yeah. like being home with a newborn after a week. Like, you, you know what that feels like, what that can be like. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we do have some questions that we've been asking all yeah. of our moms yep. um, in this, in okay. this segment. Um, yeah. One of our questions is, is there any advice that you wish somebody would have told you? Um, like while you're pregnant, bef like while you're in labor, right yeah. afterwards, is there anything that you wish that somebody would have told you that you just didn't know about pregnancy, labor, being a mom in general? Um, that it's not always going to be this intense feeling of love and joy every single day. Um, because especially as your children grow, they're, they're human beings. And I think that, yeah. you know, it's important to realize that they're going to develop, you know, the ability to make their own choices and their own personalities and, you know, different ways to, you know, to tiptoe on your last nerve or, you know, <laughs> test it. Yeah. And it's okay some days if you go to bed and it's not like this overwhelming feeling of like just love and joy and rainbows and sprinkles. It doesn't make you any less of a mom. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. of course, I unconditionally love my children, but yeah, sometimes yeah. I just don't like them. Yeah. I mean, you know? yeah. That's, that's actually... So on Sunday, I'm like... Yeah, we, that's a good we, one. We need some time apart. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah. And, the, and then... It's, uh, it's true, and I felt guilty a lot at first, but, you know, if, yeah. if I didn't go to bed and... Know, and and that's... Play about it, and that's the point of this segment. Words that I spoke yeah. loudly or whatever. Yeah. And that's and that's a lot of the reason why we're doing this segment is because it's like they, people people kind of expect moms to be robots. It's like, you know, just like you yeah. said, you know, we have to remember that our kids are humans. So are we yeah. like we, you know, I yeah. can't, I can't be when you've shown me the same blue block seven times, like I'm not going to be as excited the seventh time as I was the first time, you but know, maybe the eighth time. Yeah, really. Be. But it's like, you, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah. it's, and it's fine to feel that way. And I actually, you know, so our, you know, Melinda and I have a one-year-old, so we're not, we're not quite the level of expert that you are, but so we, but we one of the yeah, things <laughs> but like one of the things is like I just recently got to a point with him being almost a year and a half where I say no like no I'm not making dinner no I'm not doing the dishes because I always felt bad if I didn't continue to do the things I had always done before and now I'm like you know what's so funny about that and I just I just sat my children down and had the same conversation with them um, and it, it's so funny that you brought that up because this, I, I literally just said this in a text message to a friend of mine last night when I was trying to give her encouragement. Yeah. No is a complete sentence. Yeah. And yeah. I told my boys that. Oh, I love like, that. No is a, it's okay for them to say no when yeah. they're uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I don't force my boys to hug or kiss any family members. I give them the option, but if they say no, no because it's, it's really important you know, to me to teach them body autonomy and that they, so much of their life is dictated by, by choices that other people are making for them. Yeah. But I think it's important to show them that they yeah. have power too. They have control. And that no yeah. is a complete sentence. I like that. Yeah. They can just say no. I like that. I, and, and it's it's hard. It's hard because I do find myself wanting to do so much, but I but it's it's like the common thing is like you know you can't have a happy like you can't do what you what you should do for your family if you are not happy. Right. Like you have to be exactly. you know like where you are um, with yourself. Um, and then I think our our other question that we normally that we've been asking is. Um, do you feel, um, other than, because I know we, we've kind of talked about a lot of stuff, yeah. was there anything, um, whether simple or complex, that you've just, after you had, um, Liam is the oldest? Yes. 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 Liam, yes. Finn, Finney is the little. Okay. okay. So, um, so after you had Liam, or even if you felt this way after you had Finn, was there anything that you felt just completely unprepared for? Um... <laughs> Hard question. Sorry. So, yes, yes, but I don't know if this is the, the direction to go. 
But okay. I'll say, yes, the thing that I felt most unprepared for, and I think that it was circumstantial for me going back to just how young I was and stuff, sure. is how much how much my my relationships were going to change and how much different mm. my friendships looked. How and, yeah. and, and it's in a negative and positive way at the time, but like sure. I said, I try not to think of it as negative when the season ends, but right. I was completely unprepared for, um, you know, how many friends would fall off at that point, but I was also completely unprepared for for the bond and the, the relationship that I would grow with other moms mm-hmm. and who have now become my best friends. I mean, if, yeah. if I had not had Liam, my, my best friend, I met through Trevor, um, her name's Laura, shout out. She's <laughs> my angel on earth. Um, I would never have met her. And I'm com- I was completely unprepared for like how, how intense and deep a friendship could go when, you know, when you, you're bringing people into your life during yep. this stage yep. of life when, like, everything's very, like, vulnerable and raw, mm-hmm. um, and just how much, how much relationships could evolve, and, you know, mm-hmm. it's just a whole different level of friendship. I'm sure y'all, too, I don't know, you know, I know y'all said that y'all have known each other for a while, but even friends who I was friends with before, like, our relationships and our bonds grew as we grew as moms, um, so, I mean, you know, that was, I guess, to put a positive spin on it. Sure. Well, this has been an awesome conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much again for calling in and talking to us. Yeah. I'm just yeah, I appreciate it. Y'all letting me share my story and, um, you know, it's, it's always therapeutic just to talk, you know, to another yeah. mom who gets it and feel like you can be unfiltered and. Well, yeah, to somebody, you, somebody who gives a damn. Worry about your yeah. Words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No. no. So that was an awesome conversation with Caitlin, sure. and we hope that somebody out there that there is something in that that has helped you because it's this is why we're here. We yeah. are building this awesome village of moms and women who are able to support each other and talk about topics that are hard to talk about, um, especially postpartum depression. It's so and mental health in general, like. It's hard to talk about, but yep. we need to because it's important. You know, mom's yeah. health is really important. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, uh, definitely hit the like button. If you want to see more things like this, comment below, let us know, hit the subscribe button. And if you click the bell, it'll let you know as soon as we post our next video. And uh, follow us on social media. Everything's linked down below. And we uh, will see all you moms next time. Thanks. Bye.